Okay, this is 14.6 addendum, example three. So this is not an overly tricky example, it's just a little bit different than the other two, which is why I'd like to go through it. So here's the situation, we'll say suppose that D is the solid, this will be um, below the cone C equals say 9 minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. So there's a cone opening down with vertex at 9. It'll be outside x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. That's a sphere centered at the origin. And it'll be above the xy plane. What we want to do is we want to evaluate the triple integral over d of say y squared z dv. So what we'll do is we'll draw a picture first and we'll help us see what's going on. So is the axes. So this cone, this cone opens down, has a vertex up at nine. So like this. I won't draw the back just yet. The sphere that it's outside is the sphere of radius one. So this is out at nine. The sphere is actually fairly small. It's like in here. I'm not gonna draw the bottom because the thing that we're looking at is above the xy plane. Draw the back of the cone now. So the solid that we've actually got here, so let's, let's just write above xy plane. So the solid that we have is actually really just a cone, um, like a solid cone with a small hemisphere drilled out. All right, so another picture might be something like this. And then this little hemisphere has been drilled out. So way under here, there's the hemisphere, a hole or a dip if you like, or an indentation. So when we integrate this, in fact, two of the, the, um, the variables are easy to see. So the following, right? Um, as usual, as the previous two examples, we see theta goes zero to two pi. And then phi, phi goes from straight up to the xy plane. So we see the phi goes from zero to pi over two. Okay. If that's not clear, we can uh, just draw a little picture on the side here. Just to clarify, here's the cone shape. That's a little uh, overzealous, but that's all right. With its indentation, there is the origin right in the middle, right there. So if you look straight up, there is D and the D goes all the way to the horizontal. There's D in here. And then it stops here at pi over two, starts here at zero. That gives us our, our phi values. The one that's sort of a bit weird here is uh, how about rho? So again, let me just draw one more picture. I'm gonna exaggerate the picture a bit in the sense that I'll make the hemisphere bit just a bit bigger, just to get a feel for what's going on. So what you wanna do again, is like we did before, is you wanna put yourself at the origin. Suppose you're right here at the origin and you take a trip out through D. So you get nothing, you're in empty space until you hit the sphere, and then you're in D until you hit the cone, and then you're out. Right? So the inside function, the near function, the one we hit first, we first, hit or coming outwards, we first hit the sphere. This is um, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. So this is rho equals one. That's nice and easy. So second, we 
we hit the cone. Now the cone's a bit weird, right? This is the cone. C equals nine minus square root of x squared plus y squared. This is not at all in spherical. We need this as rho equals something. So we have to do a giant conversion, which seems a bit messy, but isn't so bad. All right, so let's plug in what we know. We know that z is rho cosine phi. That's nine minus the square root. We know that x squared is rho squared sine squared phi. Square roots and the squares cancel, and we get rho cosine phi equals nine minus rho sine phi. We need to solve for phi, so we should get everything on one side and factor it out. So rho cosine phi plus sine phi equals nine. So then rho equals nine over cosine phi plus sine phi. So that's that cone in spherical. So the reason I wanted to do this is just to point out that that is totally not at all obviously a cone. Like it's not, when you look at that equation, your brain wouldn't think cone, but that's what it is. So therefore we can say at the end of the day here that rho goes from one to this thing, this nine divided by cosine phi plus sine phi. Okay. So finally, we can finish up. We can say that the integral over d of y squared z dv, this will be long and messy. Um, this is zero to two pi. Then we have zero to pi over two. Then we have these icky ones. We have from one to nine over cosine phi plus sine phi. Then we have the y squared z. So y we know is rho sine phi sine theta, that's squared. The z we know, the z is the rho cosine phi. Then we have the Jacobian, that's the rho squared sine phi. Then we have the d rho d phi d theta. So just to sort of summarize all this stuff at the end, this is the y squared, this is the z, this is the Jacobian. And that's the final answer that gets evaluated. Again, messy as all get out, but that's the thing that'll do the job.